Love y'all, babies. Um, where Bree at? Lord bless Bree too, in Jesus' name. Any other teenagers I missed? No? Okay. Hallelujah. So this is a family Sunday, so let's give it up for our kids. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I don't think we say it enough. We do thank the teachers that spend their time teaching the kids on Sundays. Um, we really appreciate it. Amen. So we are going to be continuing today in the book of Romans. If you need a Bible, it should be one in the seats below you, in front of you, behind you. Something like that. Hallelujah. And we are going to be in Romans chapter 12. Once you get it, if you would stand for the reading of the word, as we just want to honor and reverence the text. Romans chapter 12. Starting at verse 3. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not have all the same functions, so we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, and the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. Amen. So last week we looked at verse 3, and we talked about thinking soberly about ourselves. We talked a lot about humility and realizing that we don't have anything to brag about because everything that we have has been given to us. And this week we are kind of switching gears because we are saying that, yes, we are in fact gifted and God is the one that has gifted us. And so we're going to look today a lot at the local church and all of our individual roles here in the local church. I want to start off today by reading Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 3 through 5, that's going to help lay the groundwork for how we want to approach the text today. Ephesians 1, starting at verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Let's pause there and understand as it relates to our text that part of this is referring to the fact that in Christ, when you were saved and became a believer, God has given you spiritual blessings. One of them being the way that you have been equipped to serve the Lord. Let's continue on there. It says, even as he chose us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Again, as we start looking at your spiritual gifts today, and as we start to look at how you are to use them and fit into the body of Christ, understanding that that was planned out before time began. We're going to see in our text today that each one of us has been uniquely gifted. And so that gifting has even been thought of by God before you were even born. This is important to understand, and I, I want to use this to lay the groundwork because I want us to understand how serious this is today. If the Lord spent time thinking about how he wanted to use you, we ought to be serious about stewarding the gifts that God has given us. 
It says, in love, he has predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. So there's the groundwork. The Lord has saved you, and he has predestined you to be holy before him. And not only that, he has gifted you. So that's the groundwork for our text today. So let's go back to our text. Let's go back to Romans chapter 12. Let's look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, For as in one body we have many members, body. It's using that as an example. So it says we have one body, but within your body you have a pancreas, you have hands, you have ears, you have a tongue, you have a brain, you have a stomach, you have all of these things in your body. And it says, as in one body we have many members, but the members do not have the same function. So what is the point? The point is everyone is not the same, but there is a diversity of functions. So like the human body, all have the same purpose to sustain life, but all of the different parts of the body sustain life in different ways. It's kind of like this past week I was working on my car, and I'm not the best mechanic in the world. Um, It took me two days to take out my alternator and replace it. But to my defense, it was a difficult alternate. It was like on the side, and it was connected to the engine. But anyway, so here, what's the point of the story? The point of the story is that um, I finally got my car started. I got the alternator on. I charged up the battery. I got the car started. And it hadn't been started in about a year, so I left it running for about a half an hour. But at some point in that half an hour, one of the pulleys broke off the car, and it no longer ran. What's the point? The point is that small, the pulley was about this big. That small part caused the whole car not to work. And so just like that car has different parts in it that help it to do its function, help it to move, just is the same thing with us in the body of Christ. There are men, we are all different, um, but we are all important in the body of Christ. We, this is important because We cannot look at our brother and sister and be like, they need to be doing this or they need to be doing that. Why? Because an ear does not need to see. A mouth does not need to see. I'm stuck on the seeing part here. What's the point? The point is that everybody in the body is different. So the way that I serve the body may be different than the way Steve does. And the way Steve does it may be different than the way Jocelyn does. And so it's important that we understand that. It's also important that we understand that everyone is not the same in the body and that there's a diversity of functions because we don't want to try to fit a square, how does it go, square peg in a round hole? We want people to be able to function in their gifts and in their callings, not just in a particular template or mode that we know about. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to further emphasize this idea of there being a diversity of functions and everyone not being the same in the body of Christ. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we are going to look at verses 4 through 6. It says, Now there are a variety of gifts but the same Spirit. What's the Spirit there? That's the Holy Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. What does that mean? That there is a variety of ways that people serve the Lord in the kingdom of God. It says that there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. So what this text is saying, again, is reinforcing this idea that in the body of Christ, God has made different functions. Everybody is not the same, but we all have the same goal. 
What is our goal as the body of Christ? On a larger scale, our, our goal is to make disciples, to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to shine God's light in spiritual darkness. And here at our church, our mission is to make disciples that grow in love towards God and each other. But all of us may go about doing it in different ways. Let's keep moving. It says, it says verse, uh, verse 6. Oh, yeah, there are a variety of activities, but the same God who empowers them all in everyone. So that is the first point, that everyone is not the same in the body of Christ. Let's look at verse 5 in our original text. Romans chapter 12, verse 5. It reads, So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. So point number two, we must embrace the vertical and horizontal nature of the body of Christ. What does that mean? It says that we, can you leave that up for me, Jocelyn? It says that we are many, we are one body in Christ. That means that all of us in this room here today that are Christians, we are one and we are in the body of Christ, meaning that we are his hands and feet. We do generally the work of Jesus Christ. That's a part that all of us understand. This is something I used to say when I didn't like going to church. I would say I can be on an island somewhere and still be part of the body of Christ, so why do I need to go to church? But I didn't understand the second part of this verse. The second part of this verse says, so we, though we are many, we are one body in Christ, but it says we and we are individually members one of another. So what this verse is getting at is both the universal body of Christ and the local body of Christ. Because we are not only members in Jesus Christ, but it says we are each other's members. What does that mean? It means that, it means that we are to care about the other parts of the body. In the scripture, there are about 50 one another's in scripture. And if we are to, um, if we are individually members one of another, that means that we are to care about each other. Here are some of the one another's that we see in scripture. We see be at peace with one another. We see wash one another's feet. We see love one another a multitude of times. It says be devoted to one another, honor one another, live in harmony with one another. It says greet one another. It says when you come together to eat, wait for each other. It says serve with one another. It says be patient with one another. It says carry each other's burdens. It says forgive each other. It says rejoice with one another. What is the point? That in order for us to be part of the body of Christ, we have to be doing things with one another. This points to the fact that the local body is important to the Lord and we are commanded to be part of a local body. Here is an example that I thought of. Y'all got to forgive me because I'm not exactly a music person. But I think what this text is saying is that we have to be both um, melody and harmony in the body of Christ. What does that mean? It means, I think melody means everybody sings it the same. Is that right, Kay? We all can sing it and all can find a common note, right? So we are all singing and we are all conveying a message and we are singing when we're singing in, in melody. But when we are singing in harmony, that means that if I got the wrong note and Kay got the right one, it's going to sound bad. Why? Because we have to be in sync together. And so in the body of Christ, we have to both be melody. That is, we are all one body, but we are individually members of one another. That is the harmony of the body of Christ. Like the parts of the body, we are all dependent on each other. Point number three, God has given everyone a gift in the body of Christ. Let's look at verse six. 
having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Notice there, it says, again, it restates the fact that there are a diversity of gifts in the body, but then it says that this grace has been given to us. This is what we were talking about when we read first, um, that first verse in Ephesians chapter 1. God has given all of us a grace, a gift. Why does it say there a grace? is given because grace is supernatural enablement. Grace, if, if the Lord has given you a grace, this means that this is something that is divine, that has come to you in order for you to accomplish certain tasks. And so God has given you his grace. He has given you wind on your back to accomplish his will. When the Lord created you, the scripture is telling us that he gave you a little something extra for his glory and for our good. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, to see further about this fact that God has given everyone a gift. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's look at verse number 7. It says, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. What does that mean? Again, it's reiterating the fact that every single one of you here today, God has given you a particular gifting, a particular manifestation. What is the manifestation referring to? That grace that he has given you. Meaning it is something that is special, that is from him in order for you to accomplish his work. We see this idea of gifts and graces and anointings even in the Old Testament. The Bible talked about how certain people were um, gifted to particularly build the temple of God. We see there how um, people were particularly gifted to play a certain instrument. Even as a football player, we had chapel, and oftentimes our speaker would quote the scripture that talks about how God has trained David's hands for war. He's even been gifted in that way. What is the point? All of us have been gifted by God for his glory, for our good, and for the uh, body of Christ. This should cause us and what we're reading today should cause us to either seek God for clarity concerning what he, how he has gifted us for his body or to worship God through use of your gift. Let me say that again. We should all be either A, praying for clarity on how we have been gifted and how we are supposed to use, remember we read the list, these different functions, these different activities, these different gifts, all of these things that God has given us, how we're supposed to put that into practice, right? And for those that maybe don't need as much clarity, we should be praying and saying, God, how can I worship you with how you have uniquely blessed me? Why? Why? Let's look at Colossians 3.23. Why should we care about this? Colossians 3.23. It says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. What does that mean? It means that in these areas that we serve the local body, in these areas that we serve God with our gifting, we are to do it heartily. Some of us have jobs. We may not necessarily work heartily on our jobs. We should work heartily on our jobs because it is for God's glory. But even more so than on our jobs, we should work heartily in whatever way that God wants us to be used for his kingdom. Um. We're going to look at Matthew 5, 16 in a minute, but 
This, this way that we use the gifting that God has given us goes through every area of our lives. Because Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine that men may see your good works, and then they will give glory to the Father. So the way in which we go about using the gifts and the talents that God has given us are ultimately not for us, like this text is saying here, but so that God would look good. Amen. Point number four is a question. Are you using your gifts for the kingdom of God? Let's go back to our original text. Back to Romans 12, and we're going to look at verse 6b. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Let us use them. So the question we have today is, are you using your gifts, your talents, whatever God has uniquely blessed you with, are you using it for his glory? Or are you just kind of going with the flow? Where shall we use these gifts of God? We should use them everywhere that we are. Because every part of you is for God's glory and for God's use. Therefore, we should use these gifts everywhere. We use these giftings at home. We use these giftings at school. We use these giftings at work. We use them in our community. We use them in our church. We use them in our business. We use them in our social settings. Because again, Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine. Why is this important? If I gave you a gift or a training or a skill, maybe you would use it. Maybe you wouldn't. But if God, the creator of heaven and earth, who knew you before time began, who knew your name and planned out your days, gives you a gift, talent, ability, or a desire to please him in an intentional way of being, we ought to use it. Why? Because of who the gift giver is. Let's look at, let's, let's read the rest of the verses, and then we're going to end in Matthew 25. So next week we'll get into what some of these spiritual gifts are, but we will have a preview um, here today. So let's read verses 6 through 8. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. I'm not going to get into it today, but we can all see that there are a myriad of ways that you can be used by God in his kingdom. One of them is service, just like, like helping in the building or volunteering or acts of mercy, how you treat other people. All of these are ways in which you can use your gifting in the body of Christ. So let's end here by looking at Matthew 25, which is going to talk about stewardship of the gifts that God has given you. Let's go to Matthew 25, starting at verse 14. Verse 14. 